guys, it's Land of Blade from Redefine Horizons, and this is the second video, I think it's the second video, <laughs> that I'm doing on Boundary Survey Reports. So, uh, if you remember in the last video, we finished up this section on our filed survey maps, and so I, I wanted to go ahead and walk you guys through the rest of this report. So, the next section I have is on field surveys. And I just break down what was done uh, on each of the field surveys. So in this case, we, we had three visits to the site. So September 7th was our initial survey. So I just say who was there, uh, who was uh, leading each crew. So in this case, I was read, leading one crew. My partner was uh, leading another crew. And then just real short summary uh, during the field survey, what was done. Okay, so this first survey, we... Established our control, set aerial targets for the UAV mapping, and then searched for and tied uh, property corner monuments. Then we went back, uh, we, I shouldn't say we, my partner went back on a couple days later on the 9th and uh, made the flight for the UAV aerial mapping. Then we went back on our third trip uh, on September 4th, and I should say uh, who was running the crew. So Danny and I worked as a single field crew that day. And we basically went back and searched for corners that we couldn't find the first time. So we went back with survey grade stakeout based on our initial survey. And I can't remember, we searched for three or four additional monuments. Uh, we found one. Uh, we still couldn't find the, the two bottom corners. So that covers the, uh, the field survey information. Uh, then the next section I do is... Um, I actually try and walk through the boundary resolution. So I talk about, uh, you know, what's in the, what controlling calls are in the vesting deed land description. So in this case, uh, because we had a lot of block description, that's pretty easy. Uh, so the, uh, the, the survey map, the controlling subdivision map, that's actually where the controlling calls are. And then I go ahead and walk through line by line of the parcel what the controlling car call was and how we established it. So, for example, east line of the subject parcel is the north-south one-quarter section line of section 3 and the north-south one-quarter section line of section 10. So that's the controlling call or the controlling element. And then how did I establish it on this survey? It was established using the found property corner monuments on our controlling subdivision map. Okay, so I do that for each line. So I've got a rectangular parcel here. I've got four lines. I walk through each one. So you should be able to read this and figure out exactly how we established the boundary. Now these, these notes are fairly simple because on this survey I found a bunch of uh, controlling uh, monuments and um, the best available evidence and there, there weren't any conflicting monuments. Uh, so these notes are fairly simple. You know, I didn't do any proportioning or prorating or I didn't hold any record bearings and distances. Basically the, the map was put in for found monuments. Um, uh, that except for the, the, the two southerly corners of the parcel. Uh, but other than that, everything else was basically established a final monument off that parcel map, controlling parcel map. So the next section I do is uh, I just talk about the, the evidence and the evaluation of evidence from the field surveys and the boundary resolution. So I start with monuments. So I actually walk through each monument on the survey and I say what was found and whether or not I accepted it as the corner on the referenced, the, the, the source document or the referring map. It like, could be a deed, I guess, the source document or source map. And so I, I break these up. Um, I break it up into to found original uh, controlling corners and then... Retracement corners, which in this case I only found one retracement corner. I usually find almost all retracement corners. This case was a little bit uh, unique. And then I also describe the areas that I uh, searched for. And uh, if I didn't find a monument at a corner, I, I describe how I established it. So these are the two, the southeast and the southwest corner of my parcel, which I didn't find. So just to, again to review, and e each monument gets a unique ID. So just to review... Found original controlling monuments, which you won't have if you don't have a subdivision as a general rule. Uh, then we have the retracement monuments. That's where usually on a normal survey most of my monument notes are. 
And then I also have a description for uh, each monument I found. I just was uh, thinking about it as I uh, recorded this. I wanted to add a little more detail here. So on my search area, so I was gonna, I'm just going to say search area was... 15 feet wide in an east-west direction and 40 feet long in a more south direction centered along the barbed wire boundary fence. So I just want to give people uh, an idea of uh, what kind of search effort we made. We made a very diligent <laughs> search effort. I spent a couple hours looking for this corner. And uh, we also had a survey grade, uh, survey grade monument. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, two searches were made. The first search, or I'm sorry, the second search. You can hear my wife cackling in there, sorry. Second search was made. Survey grade search coordinate. And I, I think those were within a foot, probably. Okay, then I just established it using record data and the other monuments, uh, other found monuments on the map. Okay, I had a similar search area on my other corner. Uh, but I want to make a note, uh, search area included a culvert crossing and levee with a bit of steep terrain in tall grass. Uh, it is unclear the levee and culvert placed after the um, monument was set in the 1990s. <clears throat> okay, so I didn't find that one. Uh, you know, the more information you can give the next surveyor, the better about your search. So again, made a, made a diligent search, went back twice, couldn't find the monument. Um, I'm a little frustrated that I think it's there. <laughs> Uh, but I really, I really beat the, beat the ground looking for that thing and wasn't able to find it. Okay, so then after I get done uh, talking about my monuments and my search areas, uh, th then I talk about the physical occupation along the boundaries. And so in this case, I just have a bolded list, and I just say uh, there's a barbed wire fence 40 feet offset from center line and baseline road. That's on the north line. Then on the east and west lines, we have long-standing uh, barbed wire fences, and there's no fence or other occupation on the south line. And I think it's really important to say that when you when you get a, a boundary line with no occupation, you should note that in your survey report. So then I have a, a couple of notes here. I think there are two or three. There's three notes, um, and, and these are just I don't know if I want to call them unique, but these are I you know noteworthy items that I, I want to make sure I make that I make a note of. So here's the first one and I, I'm, I'm not going to get into excruciating detail with you guys on this but essentially the, the first retracing surveyor in here in a very very long time um, did a single proportion over five miles on my north line and then proceeded to call uh, those two long-standing uh, barbed wire fences on my east and west line uh, out by several feet. And when he did that, he, he threw all kinds of physical improvements on the wrong side of the property line. So there's an ag well, uh, there's an access, there's more than one access road, gates, um, levees, culverts, everything now is driveways to the, to the main public road are now all um, on the opposite side of the property line than the owners think. And uh, there was two other surveyors that came in and basically perpetuated that uh, solution which in my opinion was incorrect so I'm just making a note about that um, you know and I, I can't do anything about it 
uh, it's now a, a title problem that has to get fixed probably with some boundary line agreements um, and I, I talked to the client about that but I, I've got a three or four paragraph note in there that talks about what I think happened and why I think it's a problem um, the, the other kind of weird thing um, that I couldn't figure out and I talked to the county about this uh, is on my my map the uh, the surveyor shows the north boundary of my parcel as not on the center line uh, which I don't understand because he's as far as you can tell he's the only guy that does that and based on the other information in the deeds and in in the road deed and um, in in the survey next door I believe the township boundary the north line of the section and the township boundary is also the center line of the road and because the road is an easement it would be the north boundary of my parcel but uh, for some reason uh, he did not think so and he doesn't indicate on his map why he thought the north line of my parcel was not coincidence not coincident with the center line of the or with the yeah uh, sorry with the township boundary north line of the section the county surveyor followed the map he doesn't there's not there's I just there's no explanation and uh, I'm not gonna rule out that I'm missing something just super obvious but um, I, I can't figure out what it is. Uh, so I'm just making a note about that. And I also talked to my client about that. And then I just have a quick note here that just makes it clear that I basically held the found property corner monuments on this uh, parse map, the subdivision map, and the record data to reestablish my parcels. And that the, that the monuments fit the record data on the map, which you would hope, given that it was a map in the early 2000s, it, it fit well, and it did. Um, so uh, that that's basically it for the, for uh, the notes on the boundary resolution. And you may not have these notes if, if everything's kind of a slam dunk, but I had some issues, so I wanted to describe those. Then I have uh, my appendices. So appendix one, I just give a, a short description of the boundary research. Uh, hey, where did I get my maps? You know, how did the county index them? Where did I get my deeds? Where did I get my title? Uh, sorry, my tax assessor records. And um, so that this particular county, the maps are indexed, filed survey maps are indexed on the tax assessor maps. And um, I also called uh, the county, talked to the public works department and confirmed there weren't any unrecorded maps or other maps that I had missed. Recently filed map, that's always a good thing to do in the boundary survey. And then, uh, oops, sorry, this is appendix two. Appendix two is the tax assessor records. So I just explained what tax assessor maps I pulled so in this case, I pulled uh, I pulled three maps. So I pulled the map for my parcel, and then I pulled the tax assessor parcel map to the east and the north, and reviewed those. And then uh, the third appendix is on the land title report. So in this case, uh, we were provided a title report and reviewed it. So I just put in the information about the title report, indicate that the uh, legal description in the title report matched the vesting deed, and that the exceptions to title insurance coverage were discussed in. Uh, the appendix this is actually going to be uh, an appendix four. So appendix four is my uh, preliminary land title report analysis sheet. That's something I picked up from Caltrans, which is pretty handy. And I just put that in as the appendix, so we can take a look at that. So let me get that guy, let's just get that open so you guys can see it. Sorry, my wife's banging around in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so here is my uh, preliminary land title analysis report. And uh, basically what we do as we go in and we just walk through every exception, kind of categorize it, and then it, if it has a legal description, so it's an easement, we talk about uh, what is the type of description, can we map it, yes or no, and then any notes. Um, so, you know, this exception appears to be a duplicate, just things like that. And that'll go into the boundary survey report as appendix, and I don't always do that. We don't always map easements on every boundary survey, but in this, uh, in this case we did. So we will include that with a report. So, uh, guys, I hope you 
were able, I don't, I don't want to say enjoy, you probably didn't enjoy, but I hope you learned a little bit from these two videos and you can use them to uh, create your own boundary survey reports.